Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. I don't know where it is that you are listening to these episodes on Live Signatures Radio. Whatever the place, you are much welcome every time we are here on this episode. I am talking about purpose, productivity, or I am talking about resilience. And for the most part, I love doing this in terms of series where we take a particular message and we delve into it for a while. And that's what we've been doing in the past several episodes. We've been talking about this topic of motivation and uh, the culmination of this topic is to talk about the five types of external motivation that we need daily. Daily is the key there. If you're not motivated today, somebody else is going to be motivated above you and before you know it, they're above you actually and um, you're left behind. Motivation is what drives humanity. There is nothing else that drives humanity apart from motivation. You can call negative motivation, positive motivation, whatever the case is, we are driven to do the things that we do on a daily basis on the level of motivation that we do have. So what are the five external types of motivation that we should be looking for today? Let us look at the second one. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Name just about any accomplishment in in humanity. Maybe it could be in engineering, it could be in construction, it could be in people management, it could be in governance, it could be in education, in art, in music, in industry, it could be in just about anything. Any type of motivation, any type of development, any type of achievement, any type of success, any type of thing that you see has been for the most part as a result of motivation. Motivation is something that helps you to move. It's something that constricts you, focuses you, and you need to make sure that something has been finished. It helps you to rise up above the level of challenges and the level of obstacles that you're facing at the moment and rise above them so that you can be able to do what you can be able to finish that which you envisioned in the beginning. I don't know what you will do without motivation in your life. I don't know what, where will you will be without motivation in your life. And we've been looking at these things. We've been saying that there is intrinsic motivation and then there is external motivation. There's some things that come above you, I mean, come on you in your life and they force you or they kind of channel you, so, so to speak, and they infuse inside of you some level of activity because you are motivated. And we looked at one of them yesterday, which is competition. Competition is very important. In fact, sometimes we use competition negatively. We use competition in a toxic way. We use competition so that we can be, we can kill everyone that is trying to compete with us so that we can remain above. No, if you are to use competition in a healthier way, you will actually empower yourself so that you can be better off than anybody else who is competing for the same thing. That's why competition, when it comes in your life, for example, when you're just doing things alone, you know, you're just running your own race, so to speak. And I know there's a, a whole message you can preach a month of Sundays just talking about running your own race. It's one thing to run your own race. It's quite another thing to join a race where everyone else is running in the same direction that you're going. And first, you just realize, wait a minute, I am slow. 
I've been running my own race. I've been killing myself. I mean, I've been wow. I've been pulling it off. I've been checking my own personal bests and so on. And now you're pitted against other people. And you realize you're slow. You're not enduring as you should be. What does that do? It gives you motivation to be faster, to be more enduring, to match at least to match the best that are that are there in the field, in your field. That's what competition is, and it can happen to you in just about anything. You could be a blogger, you could be a podcaster, you could be a social media enthusiast, you could be a manager, you could be a secretary, you could be whoever it is that you are. What you say could be a mother. I don't know about mothers and competition, but I'm not gonna go there. You see, my point is that competition is something that infuses inside of you an external motivation that forces you to become a better person. Number one, number two. Let us look at something else that is going to help you to become motivated. This one I called it pace setters. You know what a pace setter is? Let me tell you something about pace setters. There's a time that this guy called Eliud Kipchoge was running his race to run a marathon under two hours, something that no human has ever done, at least recorded. <laughs> no human has ever done since Adam. And he ran this race. I can't remember the place. Was it in Berlin? I don't know if it was in Berlin. And the way he was running this race was with the use of groups of pace setters. These groups will come at different intervals, in different junctions in his race, and they will just push him. I mean, they will just run ahead of him in such a very fast way. And his job was to keep up with them. He did that so much so that he was able to break the record and run a sub two-hour marathon. It was called Inois. No man is limited. Something like that. A pace setter is someone who is faster than you or sets the pace. Maybe they are not necessarily faster, but they are very, very speedy, so to speak. And I'm using the analogy of sports, which you can channel in just about any other niche in our lives. We can have a pace setter in academics. We have had those ones, by the way. I was in a, a class in primary school that was so filled up with those pace setters. I'm telling you, the, I mean, the most I could pretend, not pretend, I could try. To be top of the class, I just never could. I was always top four. There were these three guys that you were not able to. I was not able to beat them. And of course, even behind me, there were guys who were not able to beat me. We were best sitting for one another. Only until we got up to the highest level of primary school and were doing the class eight examinations that I was able to come tops. But I can guarantee you this: if you put me, if you put me in a class full of dull people, I would not have been motivated to perform as I did perform. You need best setters in your life. I don't care what area of life it is that you are faced in, or what area of life that it is that you you seeking to be productive. You need best setters in there. And best setters are people that are used quite a lot in athletics, and these are people whose main job in life, this main job, their main job is not to win. Their main job is to make others win. Is to make others shine. In athletics, in fact, they are employed specifically to do that. I talked about Eliud Kipchoge and the sub two-hour marathon. He did that using pace setters. I have reason to believe that without pace setters, he will not have been motivated enough in that particular race to finish it. You see, he needed motivation in the race. He had motivation outside of the race. I mean, everybody, uh, nearly every athlete out there, is motivated to achieve such kind of a feat. So, if you come back to our lives, a pace setter is someone who knows what you want to achieve, and they come alongside you to help you with it. This is very powerful. This is not someone who is competing against you. This is someone who wants this for you. A good example of a pace setter would be a parent, a father. Trying to spruce up his son in terms of running, by the way, just going out there and running together. The father knows that he, the son, can do better, and so the father runs ahead of him, and the son has got to run and. Run. 
catch up with him. It can take years before the son is able to break down the father and achieve much more. And you can just juxtapose this against nearly any other achievement, any other productivity area in life. This best set us, they set very high standards that without motivation we cannot attain. A son can look at his father the way his father is playing guitar. And the son wants to catch up with him. They, they can look at the way the father is cleaning himself up and making his car very nice and very clean and neat. And that is a very high standard. That's best said. For you in your life, you need to look around and see. They're going to help you to rise above and leave you to shine and glow when you deserve. Who is my best set in my life? Look for those people and let them come into your life so that you can be motivated to raise the bar and raise the standards so that you are not the same old, same old guy. You are different, you are better. Tomorrow we look at. Uh, another type of uh, people other types of people who can be good motivators in your life but until then bye bye thank you for listening to life signatures radio if you enjoyed today's show subscribe to life signatures radio on itunes stitcher or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com life signatures radio fresh clean and inspiring